So we're going to do a bit of work on finding formula of different substances. And the first part that we start with is our diatomic elements. It's so really important to set this out uh, from the start because anytime you see these elements in an equation on their own, you have to write them as a diatomic formula. What that means is that each of these elements, each of these seven elements, exist as two atoms covalently bonded together. So hydrogen doesn't exist as single hydrogen atoms. It exists as two hydrogen atoms with a covalent bond between them. If we think of our dot and cross diagram of that, if you remember, a hydrogen only has one electron. And it wants two to have a full outer shell because it's just the first shell, so it only needs two. So what happens is two hydrogen atoms pair up and they share their electrons. So they both have a full outer shell. So all of these atoms exist like that. So we see oxygen is very similar, but it shares two electrons each per atom. So that's a molecule of oxygen. So you can see how it's similar in that it's two atoms and they're covalently bonded together because they're sharing electrons. So when you see each of these elements on their own, you have to write their formula as their symbol with a little two after them. Cl2, Br2, I2. And that's only when they're on their own. So for example, if you see hydrogen chloride, they're no longer diatomic. Okay, and we'll have a look at how we would write the formula of that later on. So it's only when these are on their own they would have this formula. So all of those diatomic elements, the seven elements, will have um, this type of formula. So when we're going to write the formula of a compound, you need to know the valency of the element or of the ion that you're working with. And very simply to start with, um, you can get your valency from your group number if it's in group 1 to 7. And it's very simply, if it's in group 1, it has a valency of 1. If it's in group 2, it has a valency of 2. If it's in group 3, it has a valency of 3. Group 4, it has a valency of 4. But then we start to count back down the way. So group 5, it has a valency of 3. Group 6, it has a valency of 2. Group 7, it has a valency of 1. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1 as we work across the groups in the periodic table. You'll notice that group 8, or sometimes called group 0, it has no valency. And that is because group 8 elements, there are noble gases, they don't form compounds. And that's because, as we talked about in unit 1.3, uh, the noble gases already have a full outer shell. So if you think of helium, its atomic number is 2. There's two electrons in its outer shell, so it's completely full already. Neon has 10. Two go in the first shell. And eight go in the next shell. You can see that it has a full outer shell, so they don't want to be involved in bonding with any other atom or ion. So the, this is the simplest case where you can get the valency of an element from its group number. So one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And as you go into your exam, you should label your groups. Uh, just above the group numbers, write these maybe in a circle above your periodic table so that you can identify your valency. One last thing to note on this is hydrogen. Hydrogen doesn't really have a group number, but it always has a valency of one. So even though it's not in a particular group, hydrogen always has a valency of one. So when you go into your exam, you can simply label your groups with your valency. So one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And that means if you need to know the valency of any of these elements when you come to write formula, you can simply identify the element, see what group number it's in and see what valency it is. So if, say for example I had a compound involving calcium. I would find calcium, notice that it's in group 2 and see that it has a valency of 2. Or if I had sulphur, I'd find that it's in group 6 but it has a valency of 2. Okay. Now you'll notice that there's a block of elements in the middle 
called our transition metals that don't have a group number. So we need another method of finding their valency. One way is if you're given the valency in brackets afterwards. In order to do this, you need to know your Roman numerals. So you'll see in this table below that, um, for example, iron here. We've been given iron and then a number in Roman numerals in brackets. Okay, and that number in Roman numerals gives us the valency of our iron. So that number in Roman numerals is 2. So that means that the valency of iron in this case is 2. But you'll notice that underneath we've got iron with a 3 in brackets. So that means the valency of iron is 3 in this case. So how can it be 2 and 3? Well, that's the point of the transition metals. They can have different uh, valencies. And so that's why sometimes we need to be told the particular valency in brackets. So you need to be familiar with your Roman numerals and know that one little dash is one, two dashes is two, three lines is three, IV is four, and V is five. That's because uh, this is four, because V is five, and the dash before it means 1 before 5, which is obviously 4. So you need to be familiar with those numbers. Here we've got copper, and then a 2 in brackets. That means the valency of copper is 2. Here we've got lead and 2 in brackets. And that means that the valency of lead is 2. And silver with a 1 in brackets. That means the valency of silver is 1. So for the transition metal block... We can't tell the valency by the grip number, so we have to be told it some other way. Sometimes it's written in numbers in brackets, but sometimes you won't be given a number in brackets. So say, for example, if you had a compound containing zinc, you probably wouldn't be given a number in, um, in brackets. So what you need to do is, if it's a transition metal block, and if you're not given a number in brackets, you need to look to the back of your periodic table to get your valency. So on the back of the periodic table, you'll see a list of positive ions, and your, some of your transition metal ions are in that box. Here we've got zinc that we were just talking about. And we can see that fo um, zinc forms ions of zinc 2+. Plus. How we tell its valency is based on the number of the charge. So it doesn't matter, matter whether it's positive or negative, but because it's zinc 2+, plus, that means the valency of zinc would be 2 in this case. Let's have a look at the other ones. So we've got a silver, which is Ag+. Plus. There's no number in front of it, which really means that this is Ag1+. Plus. So the valency of silver is 1. Here we've got lead 2+. Plus. So that means the valency is 2. We've got iron 3+. Plus. That means the valency is 3. Iron 2+. Plus. That means the valency is 2. And there's that example of iron where we can have a valency of 2 in the number in brackets here, or the valency of 3, and that matches up with the charge of the ion that it forms. So if you're not given a number in brackets, have a look at the back of the periodic table, and it might be there. You get your valency from the number of the charge. So before we go any further with valencies, um, we've looked at a couple of ways to find out valencies. So if it is in a group that has a number, you find the valency based on the group number. If it's in the transition metal block, you'll either be given a number in brackets, or you'll have a look at the back of the periodic table. But now let's put that into practice, and what do we actually use valencies for? You don't really need to know what a valency is, but you need to use it for when you're writing formula. And there's a couple of examples here. The first one's done in your notes, but I'm just going to work through it to the side. Uh, so this is on page 5. Okay, so the first example is potassium chloride. So I'm just going to write it again right here. Potassium chloride. Okay, so step number one is convert the compound name to symbols. So what we mean by that is take each part of it and convert it into symbols. So potassium is K. Chloride simply comes from chlorine, which is Cl. Okay, next step is to work out the valencies. And for these two, they're both in groups that have numbers, so we can get it from their group number. So potassium is in group one, which has a means it has a valency of one. Keep your periodic table out in front of you and have a look at these valencies as we work along. Chlorine is in group seven, so that means it also has a valency of one. 
Once we've got that, um, we need to have a look at these numbers and see if they're in the simplest ratio. So in other words, is there a number that I could divide both of these numbers by evenly? And they're both ones, so there's, I can't make that number any smaller. And there's no number that I can divide it by uh, to make that ratio smaller. So the next step, once we've got it in, this, in its simplest ratio, is we do a process called swap and drop. What that means is that the valency that did belong to chlorine has now swapped to the potassium and it's dropped down and we write it as a subscript. The valency that did belong to the potassium has swapped down and it now belongs to the chlorine. So we're left with the formula of K1Cl1. But because those numbers are just one, we don't need to include the ones. So we end up with a formula of KCl. So the very last step is you can ignore your ones if you have them. Okay, so that's an example of potassium chloride. Let's have a look at the example of magnesium oxide, which is not written in your notes. You'll need to fill it in. So the first step is convert the compound name to symbols. And I'm just going to write the name out again so that we can work directly underneath it. Okay, so magnesium is Mg. Oxide comes from oxygen, which is O. And just be careful, we don't use it as, as diatomic because it's now with magnesium. Okay, work out the valency. So if I just copy that down so that you can have a complete set in your notes. And we'll do this in different colours to show how they swap. So magnesium is in group 2, so its valency is 2. Oxygen is in group 6, which means its valency is also 2. The next step is cancel down if necessary. So is there a number that I can divide both of those numbers by? And yes, I can divide both of them by 2. So I end up with a ratio of 1 to 1. Okay, next step is to swap and drop. So I'm swapping my valencies down and I'm going to drop them down. swapping them over to the different elements and drop them down. <laughs> what I'll end up with then is Mg1O1 but I can ignore my ones so I end up with a formula of MgO. Over on the next page you see the example of iron 3 chloride. So again, let's follow the same process. When we work out our valencies, we have to do something slightly different, but the same general process is the same. So again, I'm going to write the name out here, iron chloride. Okay, so the first step is convert your name, compound name into symbols. So iron is Fe, and chloride is chlorine, which is Cl. Next step is to work out your valencies. Okay, so for iron, because it doesn't have a grip number, I need to look at the number in brackets. That's what that number is there for. And it means that the valency of iron is 3. So I can write a 3 in brackets there. Chlorine is in group 7, so it has a valency of 1. So I ask myself, is this in the simplest ratio? Is there a number that I can cancel this down to or divide both of those numbers by? And there's not. It's already in the simplest ratio. If there's ever a 1 in it, the, you won't be able to cancel it down because you can't get any simpler than 1. So the ratio is still 3 to 1. And now I'm at the stage, and we'll do that in the next step, of swapping and dropping. So I end up with Fe1, which came from the chlorine but swapped over to the iron, Cl three. And the last step is I can ignore the ones so I end up with a formula of FeCl3. So you're now ready to do a few more examples. So if you flick over to page eight and you can do examples one to ten. So for these examples you should do your working out in the box where the name is and then write your final formula in the empty box. So write your final formula in these boxes. So having a look at the first example just to show you how to set it out. 
you've got aluminium oxide here. So the first step is convert it into its symbols. So you've got aluminium, which is Al, oxide, which comes from oxygen, which is O. Then you work out your valencies. So aluminium is group three, so it has a valency of three. Oxygen is in group six, so it has a valency of two. Look to see if you can cancel that down, but it's three to two, so there's no number that you can divide both of those numbers evenly by. So I'm ready just to swap and drop, and so I end up with Al2O3. That's my final answer. I have no ones to ignore, so I can write that in my box as my final answer, Al2O3. So if you pause this video now, you can have a go at the rest of the formula and then I'll have a look through the answers. Okay, so the second example is sodium chloride. So you've got sodium, which is Na, chloride, which is chlorine, which is Cl. Next step, work out your valencies. Sodium is in group one, so it's a valency of one. Chlorine is in group one, group seven, so it has a valency of one also. When I swap and drop, I get Na1Cl1, but I can ignore my ones, so I'm left with the final formula of NaCl. Lithium oxide. Um, lithium is Li. Oxygen is O. Lithium is in group 1, so it has a valency of 1. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has a valency of 2. So when I swap and drop, I end up with Li2O1, but I can ignore my ones, so my final formula is just Li2O. Aluminium bromide. Aluminium is Al. Bromine is Br. Aluminium is in group 3, so it has a valency of 3. Bromine is in group 7, so it has a valency of 1. When you swap and drop those, you get Al1, Br3. I can ignore my ones, so I end up with just Al, Br3. Okay, potassium oxide. So potassium is K. Oxide is oxygen, which is O. Potassium has a valency of 1. Oxygen is group 6, so it has a valency of 2. So when you swap and drop those, you get K2O1, which is just K2O, when you ignore the ones. Lithium bromide. Lithium is Li. Brom bromide is from bromine, which is Br. Lithium has a valency of 1. Bromine is in group 7, so it has a valency of 1. So when you swap and drop... You get Li1Br1, which is, you can ignore the ones, so you get LiBr. Working on similarly, you should get answers of MgI2 for magnesium iodide, CaF2 for calcium fluoride, Na2O for sodium oxide, and Al2S3 for aluminium sulfide. So we'll skip past examples 11 to 13 now, but examples 14 to 20 involve our transition metal ions. So again, remember that it's the same process, but just get your valency for the number from the number inside the brackets. So looking at example 14 here, we've got copper oxide. Copper is Cu, oxygen is O. I get the valency from the number inside my brackets for my transition metal ion. So that means that copper has a valency of 1. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has a valency of 2. I cancel down if necessary, but I can't do that in this case. So I swap and drop, and I get Cu2O1. I can ignore my 1s, and so my formula is Cu2O. Silver bromide. Silver is Ag. Bromide is bromine, which is Br. Silver, because of the number in brackets, has a valency of 1. Bromine is in group 7, so has a valency of 1 also. We swap and drop, we get Ag1Br1. And we can drop our 1s and just end up with a formula of AgBr. So try the rest of those examples, 16 to 20, and then stop at example 20. So pause this video uh, while you do those, and then I'll go through the answers. So iron 2 oxide is, iron is Fe, oxygen is O, 
then we need to work out our valencies. So iron has a valency of 2 because of the number in the brackets. Oxygen also has a valency of 2 because it's in group 6. I can cancel that down to 1 to 1 because I can divide both of the valencies by 2. Then when I swap and drop, I'll end up with Fe1O1. I can ignore my 1s, and so my formula is FeO. But with iron 3 oxide, it's a different story because we've got Fe again and O for oxygen. This time the valency of my iron is 3. Valency of my oxygen is still 2, but this time I can't cancel that down. That's already in the simplest ratio. So when I swap and drop, I end up with the formula Fe2O3. Vanadium oxide. Vanadium is V. And this number inside the brackets shows its valency. And that means the valency of vanadium is 5. Oxygen is in group 6, so has a valency of 2. So when I swap and drop, I get a valent, uh, formula of V2O5. Example 19, you've got magnesium chlorides, which is just a normal example. So magnesium is Mg, chlorine is Cl. Both of those are in uh, groups that have a number. Magnesium is in group 2, chlorine is in group 7, which has a valency of 1. Swap and drop those, you get Mg1Cl2. I can ignore my 1s and end up with a formula of MgCl2. Copper 2 chloride means that I've got copper and I've got a chlorine. Copper has a valency of 2. Chlorine has a valency of 1 because it's in group 7. So when I swap and drop those, I get Cu1Cl2. Ignore my 1s and you end up with CuCl2. So we need to stop at this point and have a look at what happens when we have compounds that have molecular ions such as hydroxide. So we're now going to go back to page four and have a look at how we find the valency of ions. And this will mostly apply for um, molecular ions, but as we saw earlier, it can also work for the transition metal ions. And we've already mentioned this, that when you have an ion, you get the valency from the charge of the ion. So for example, in this ammonium ion, its formula is NH4 with a positive charge. We get the valency from the charge, and that charge is essentially 1 plus, and so the valency is 1. Whereas in carbonate, the charge is 2 minus, so my valency is 2. It doesn't matter whether um, it's positive or negative, you just look at the number of the charge. And if there is no number, if it's just minus or plus, that means that it's 1. So the dichromate ion is 2 minus, so that means the valency is 2. The ethanoate ion is minus, so that means it's 1 minus, so it has a valency of 1. And working your way on down that table, hydrogen carbonate, it has a charge of minus, so its valency is 1. Going on down, minus, which is just 1. Methanoate is 1 minus, which is valency of 1. Nitrate is a a charge of minus, which is valency of 1. Sulfate has a charge of 2 minus, so that means the valency is 2. And sulfite has a um, charge of 2 minus, so that means its valency is 2. And if you have a look at the back of your periodic table now, and you see the examples of the positive metal ions, like Fe3+, plus, looking at that charge, it means the valency is 3. Fe2+, plus, that means it has a valency of 2. And the likes of Ag+, plus, that means it has a valency of 1. So when your swap and drop on your formula involves these ions, that's the method you need to use. You get your valency from the charge. So that leads us on to writing formula with molecular ions. So if you turn to page 7, we'll have a look at how we write formula of compounds containing molecular ions. Okay. So the important thing here is to be able to separate the formula from the charge. So have a look here. This is the sulfate ion, as it appears on the back of your periodic table. If you've got a coloured one, it's in the blue box. If it's black and white, it's just in the back, and it says negative ions. 
Everything apart from the charge is involved in the formula. So if you even circle that in one colour and highlight that that's the formula, the charge, that's the charge which then gives us the valency. Okay, so it's important that um, we note that, that um, the part circled in pink is the formula. Because it means in the sulfate ion I've got one sulfur and four oxygens. It's really important that you don't forget that little four. When we're working with uh, compounds containing these ions, people forget the little number at the end so often. And it's important to remember that that number at the bottom is involved in the formula. But the number at the top, circled in blue, that is the charge and that's completely separate. So look at the nitrate ion now. It's NO3 minus. So this part is the formula. And then the minus at the top is the charge and that gives us the valency. So let's have a look at an example of writing the formula of uh, some compounds containing these molecular ions. So if you notice, part of your, your name of your compound contains a name that's not an element on the front of the periodic table. That probably means that it involves a molecular ion, which you will find on the back of your periodic table. So make sure you have a look at that now and see that you can locate that. So magnesium sulfate, that comes from magnesium, which you'll find on the front, front of your periodic table, and sulfate, the sulfate ion, which is on the back of your periodic table. So magnesium sulfate. So it's fairly similar to before, but we just need an additional step. So the first stage is that we convert our compound name to symbols. So magnesium is just simply Mg. And sulfate, well, just as we discussed above, sulfate appears in the back of the periodic table as SO4 2 minus. I have to write down the whole formula apart from the charge at this stage. So I want to write down SO4. Make sure you include the little four at the bottom. So that's all I write down, first of all. What we're going to do now um, is just because we're using a molecular ion, we're going to put this in brackets and we'll explain why later. So the next step is to work out our valencies. So magnesium is in group 2, so it has a valency of 2. Sulfate, I look to its charge. It has a charge of 2 minus, and so that means it has a valency of 2. Next step is, as before, we cancel down if necessary. And you can see that our ratio is 2 to 2. So we can divide both of those numbers by 2 and get a ratio of 1 to 1. Um, now we're at the stage of swapping and dropping. And if I just do this in the, the step above, what we can do is swap and drop and ignore the ones at the same time. That just helps us um, quicken up the process and also simplify the process in this case. So because they're both ones, we're going to end up dropping them anyway. So I would end up with a formula of Mg and then in brackets SO4. But because I don't have any number outside my brackets, I can actually just drop those brackets. So end up with a formula of MgSO4. We'll see how that's different in the example below. So this example is calcium hydroxide. And I'll just rewrite the name so we can work directly underneath it. So it's calcium hydroxide. Okay, first step is convert the compound name into symbols. So, look to the periodic table. The symbol for calcium is Ca. And the, the formula for hydroxide, again, look to the back of your periodic table. And I'll just write it up here. It appears as OH-. So, when I'm writing down the formula, I write down everything apart from the charge. In this case, it's just OH. I'm going to put that in brackets at this stage, and we'll see why in just a second. The next step is work out your valencies. So calcium is in group two, and so it has a valency of two. 
Hydroxide has a charge of 1 minus, so its valency is 1. The next step is to cancel down if necessary, but as we said, because there's a 1 involved here, it's already in the simplest ratio. So the ratio is calcium to hydroxide has a valency of 1. Next step is to swap and drop, which we'll just do at this stage. And this is why it's important to include your brackets. So we're going to swap and drop, and you could ignore the ones at the same time, but we'll just do it the long way now for this case. So it would be Ca1 and then our hydroxide, and then the two swaps over and goes outside the brackets. So just as we did before, writing it after the formula, this time we write it outside the brackets. And because we can then ignore the ones, it ends up as CA brackets OH2. The reason that it's important to include the brackets is to show that this little number 2, that applies to the whole hydroxide ion. If I didn't include the brackets, I would end up with a formula of CaOH2. And that is completely different because this formula here means one calcium, one oxygen and two hydrogens. Whereas this formula here, the little two multiplies everything inside the bracket by two. So that means I have one calcium, two oxygens and two hydrogens. So you can see that um, using the brackets completely changes the formula and changes how many we have of each type of atom. So make sure with these molecular ions that you include your brackets. So there's lots more examples of this type on page 9. So if you turn to those now and we'll do a few examples together and then you should try some yourself. So looking at example 21, we've got magnesium hydroxide. So first step is convert our uh, compound name into symbols. So we've got magnesium first of all, which is Mg, and then hydroxide, which appears in the back of your periodic table as OH minus. First part of it is I write down everything apart from the charge, which is OH. Then working out the valencies, magnesium is in group two, so has a valency of two. For the valency of hydroxide, I look to the charge. The charge is 1 minus, which means it has a valency of 1. Before I swap and drop, I'm going to put this in brackets just to remind me to do that, to put things into, put, to put the hydroxide ion into the brackets. Then when I swap and drop, I end up with Mg1 brackets OH2. I can ignore my ones, so I just end up with Mg. OH2. Okay, my next example, calcium sulfate. Calcium is Ca. Sulfate appears in the back of your periodic table as SO4 2 minus. So first thing I do is write down everything apart from the charge, including that little 4 at the bottom, SO4. Don't forget about it. Okay, so I'm going to put that in brackets to remind me to do that and then work out my valencies. So calcium is in group 2, has a valency of 2. Sulfate has a charge of 2 minus, so it has a valency of 2. You can see that the ratio is 2 to 2. That can cancel down to 1 to 1. So when we swap and drop, we end up with Ca1 brackets SO4 1. We can ignore my 1s, so we'd end up with Ca. SO4, and because there's no number outside the brackets, I don't need to include them, so it's just CaSO4. I'll do one more example with you and then try the rest yourself. So, aluminium nitrate. Aluminium is Al. Nitrate appears in the back of your periodic table. It's a molecular ion, which is NO3 minus. So, the first uh, part that I need to write down for my nitrate is everything apart from the charge. That's the formula of it. Its formula is NO3 and then it has a charge of 1 minus. So write down everything apart from the charge and then I'm going to put it in brackets to remind me to use those at a later stage. So working on my valencies, aluminium is in group 3 so it has a valency of 3. 
Nitrate has a charge of 1 minus, and so it has a valency of 1. Then when I swap and drop, I end up with a formula of Al1 brackets NO3, and then outside the brackets, I have the 3 that I swapped down from my aluminium. Okay, so from the pink 3 valency. I can ignore my 1s, and so my final formula is Al brackets and then my nitrate ion, and then outside the brackets, the little three of the valency that I swapped on. So just check when you have, you're using molecular ions that inside your brackets, if you have brackets, or if you don't have brackets at the end of your formula, what is in your brackets should be the formula of your molecular ion. Just check that you have everything there, including the wee number at the end. So try the rest yourself, pause the video, and then I'll go through the solutions with you. So you should have found that magnesium sulfate was a very similar example to 20, example 22, calcium sulfate, and you should end up with a formula of MgSO4. Sodium sulfate, sodium is Na, sulfate is SO4 2 minus, so I write down my SO4, and I'm going to put it in brackets in case I need to use those later. Valency of sodium is 1, valency of sulfate is 2. So I swap and drop those, get Na2, brackets SO4, 1. I can ignore my 1s, which is Na2, SO4. And then because there's no number outside the brackets, I can just simplify it as Na2, SO4. Lithium carbonate. You've got Li is lithium. Carbonate appears in the back of your periodic table as CO3, 2 minus. For this part, I just write down everything apart from the charge, so CO3. Lithium is in group 1, so it has a valency of 1. Carbonate has a charge of 2 minus, so it has a valency of 2. I can't simplify that down at all. So I'll put my carbonate ion in brackets, swap and drop those, and you get Li2, CO3, with a 1 outside the brackets, I can ignore my 1, so that becomes Li2CO3. And then because there's no number outside the brackets, I can ignore the brackets, so it's Li2CO3. What you'll notice here is that where you're swapping down a 1 to the molecular ion, you're going to end up ignoring the 1, and then you can drop the brackets because there's no number outside. So if you're swapping a 1 down, as in this example, from the lithium, you don't need to use brackets. The quick way is to just ignore the 1 as you swap it down, and then you don't need to put it in brackets. But if you're not confident with doing that, still do it the long way until you get the hang of it. Zinc sulfate. Well, zinc is a transition metal, and it doesn't have a number here. And so I need to look at the back of my periodic table, and it appears as Zn2+. That means that it has a valency of 2. So I write down Zn as zinc, and it has a valency of 2. Sulfate, again, is SO4 2 minus. So I write down the SO4 part, first of all, and then the 2 minus gives me my valency, which is 2. 2 to 2 cancels down to 1 to 1. And again, we're going to be, um, to do the quick way of this, and um, we're going to be swapping a 1 down to my sulfate ion. And so we can actually just ignore the 1s as we swap them down. And your formula is ZnSO4. The long way of doing that, you would get Zn1SO4 1 in brackets. You would then ignore your 1s and then ignore your brackets. Potassium should, carbonate should work out as K2CO3, similar example to example 26 of lithium carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, and um, people get confused with this. Hydrogen carbonate, it would be better if it was written all in one line. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is just one molecular ion that appears in the back of your periodic table. So if I rewrite this, if you have room underneath, it might be worth rewriting this. Because sodium hydrogen carbonate is all just one thing. So sodium is Na. Hydrogen carbonate appears in the back of your periodic table as HCO3 minus. 
So the first thing is I write down everything apart from the charge. So I write down the HCO3 part, being careful to include the little three at the end. Okay, sodium is in group one, so it has a valency of one. Hydrogen carbonate it has a, a charge of one minus, so it has a valency of one. Again, I'm going to swap those down and ignore my ones in the process. And so end up with a formula of NiHCO3. Example 30 um, is one of your simpler examples again, um, which is just cobalt CO with a valency of two because of the number in the brackets. Chloride, which is a valency of one. Swap and drop, you get COCl2. COCl2. That O needs to be small because it's cobalt. If you did it as a capital, that would mean carbon and oxygen. So back to our examples, including molecular ions. You've got sodium hydroxide. Sodium is Na. Hydroxide is OH minus. So write down everything apart from the charge, which is OH, and then use the charge for my valency. So that means the valency is going to be 1 since the charge is 1 minus. Sodium is in group 1, so it has a valency of 1. When I swap and drop, I'm going to end up ignoring my 1s, so it's just NaOH. Lithium sulfate is Li2SO4. Calcium hydroxide should have worked out as CaOH2. You need to include your brackets this time because there's a number outside the brackets. Ammonium sulfate might have been a little bit difficult. Ammonium sulfate. Ammonium is an ion on the back of your periodic table, and it's NH4+. Plus. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So again, the first part of it, just as with our other molecular ions, write down everything apart from the charge. So that's NH4. Sulfate, do the same. Write down everything apart from the charge. So that's SO4. Then use the charges to get the valency. So for ammonium, it's 1 plus, so its valency is 1. For sulfate, it has a charge of 2 minus, so its valency is 2. Let's put them both in brackets, just to keep ourselves right. So then when we swap and drop, we end up with, I'll just continue working underneath, NH4 brackets 2, that I swapped down from the sulfate, and then SO4 1. Because that um, valency, because we've got a 1 there, we can ignore the 1, first of all. And then because there's now no number outside the brackets of sulfate, we can ignore the brackets as well. So we can take those brackets out, but still need to include that little 2. So our formula is NH4 2 SO4. Copper nitrate here, you're, you're, in, you're mixing your examples of transition metal and your molecular ion. So copper has a formula of Cu. Nitrate is NO3 minus. So we write down our NO3. The valency of copper is going to be 2 because we've got a 2 inside brackets here. The valency of nitrate is going to be 1 because we have um, a charge of 1 minus. We'll put our nitrate in brackets before we swap and drop because we'll see that we end up with a formula of Cu brackets NO3 2. There was a little one there, but we can ignore that and end up with Cu NO3 2. Silver carbonate works out as Ag2CO3. Copper nitrate works out as Cu brackets NO3 and it's the same example as example 35. Iron 3 sulfate should work out as Fe2SO4 and then brackets 3. Iron 2 nitrate will be Fe brackets NO3 close your brackets 2. And finally lead nitrate should be Pb brackets NO3 2. The last type of formula that we need to get is the formula of covalent compounds, and this is back on page 6. For covalent compounds, so that is compounds that contain two non-metals, so a non-metal and a non-metal. So for example, water 
is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Its formula is H2O. So we can tell that because it's got hydrogen and oxygen. Both are non-metals, so that's covalent. There are a couple that you should just learn the formula of. So for example, water is H2O. Methane is CH4. Carbon dioxide, we'll have a look actually in a second. Another one that you could add to that list is ammonia, which is NH3. You should know that from your covalent, structure, uh, covalent bonding topic. That's one of the molecules that we look at. So for covalent compounds, the easiest way to work out its formula is by the name. Um, and that is because each of the elements will, might have a little prefix before it. And it's that little prefix that will tell us the number of that type of atom. So if you have mono, mono means one. And I like to think of that as a mono brow. Wing means one eyebrow. Di means two, tri means three, tetra means four, and you won't have to go above that. So carbon dioxide, carbon, there's no prefix in front of that, so it's just one carbon, which is C, but then I've got dioxide, that means two oxygens, so it's CO2. Sulfur trioxide, there's nothing in front of the sulfur, so it's just S, tri means three, so it's SO3. Nitrogen, nothing in front of it, so it's just N. Monoxide means that there's just one oxygen. Dinitrogen means there's two oxygens, so it's N2. Tetroxide means four oxygens. So you just get that from the name. For some covalent compounds, um, the rules of valency still apply. Uh, so for water, um, it's one you should know, but if you forgot and somehow remembered that it was made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen always has a valency of one. Oxygen has a valency of two. So then when you swap and drop, you get H2O1, and then I can ignore my one, and it becomes H2O. Methane is made up of carbon and hydrogen. So you've got carbon which is in group four, so it has a valency of four. Hydrogen always has a valency of one. So when you swap and drop, you get C1H4. Ignore my ones, I get CH4. Ammonia is nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen has a valency of three because it's in group five. Hydrogen always has a valency of one. So when we swap and drop those, we get N1H3 which we can ignore our ones as just NH3. So just to complete our examples, if you turn back to page 8, we'll, the, we'll do the example of these three covalent compounds. So ammonia, you can either learn the formula or remember that it's nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen is in group 5, so it has a valency of 3. Hydrogen is in group 1, so it has a valency of 1. Swap and drop those, we get N1H3. We can ignore our ones, so our formula is NH3. Water is hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen always has a valency of 1. Oxygen is in group 2, so it has a valency of 2. So I swap and drop those, I get H2O1. I can ignore my ones and end up with a formula of H2O. And finally, methane, which is carbon and hydrogen. Carbon has a valency of 4. Hydrogen has a valency of 1. So when I swap and drop, I get C1H4. can ignore my 1s. So I end up with a formula of CH4.